Hey there! Today I'm going to walk you through the very basics of how to create a floor plan in Revit. This is going to be as quick and as basic as possible. There will be other videos that dive deeper into some of these topics for you to learn more. Today we are just going to sail through. So the very basics of Revit, the first thing up at the very top, this is the ribbon. And you will find most of the commands that you'll need within this ribbon. So to start a floor plan, the first thing we want to do is draw a wall. So I'm going to go to, go to the architecture tab of the ribbon and just simply press the wall command. Uh, your project may or may not have a lot of options, so I'm just going to use a generic exterior six inch wall. Up at the top here, the, rib the ribbon is dynamic and depending on what command you are in, it will change to give you some options. So these are the draw tools here. Uh, so you can see this is a line, a square, an arc, a circle, or pick lines if you're tracing something. I'm going to stick with a very basic line. And then I come into my drawing space, and I'm gonna click once, and I'll drag it up as far as I wanna go. Click again, and keep on dragging. And I'm just going to create a basic perimeter of a house and then click the modify button or the press the escape key on your computer on your keyboard. So now we have a good perimeter of what could be a house. So let's draw some of the interior wall. So again, I'm going to click once on the wall command and then in the properties drop down, I'll go and select my generic six inch interior. Now for any of you architects, or interior designers don't judge on what this floor plan is going to look like. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. So I'm just drawing some basic interior walls here. And then I'll either hit escape on my keyboard or press modify. Good. So now I have interior walls and exterior walls drawn. So the next thing I want to do is place a few doors. So we have the door command here, but Maybe I don't have any doors in my model, or maybe I want to load something differently. So over on the right, it says load family. Now, a door is a Revit family or a component. So I'm going to load family, and then I'm going to go to, this is Revit's Imperial Library. And it's categorized by the categories of Revit, so I'm going to go to doors. And then I'm going to say this is house. I'm going to go to residential. So I like the little preview here, but I'm going to click on, maybe I'll scroll through. Mm, I want an exterior door. So that one is good. And then it kind of goes through options of sizes. So the reason it does this, it, instead of just bringing in all the sizes, is just to kind of cut down on file size. So if you know you only need one of these sizes, you don't want to bring in all of the sizes that are available here. And also on that, if you bring in a size and then you need another one, you don't have to go load it again. You can easily create that size in the project. So let's go, let's do a 36 by 96 or a three foot by eight foot door. And I'll bring that in. So let's make my front door, let's make it here. So what I'm doing, I'm already in the door command and I'm just hovering over the wall. A door needs a host. So this, this door needs a wall to be hosted inside of. So I can hover over and you see those blue dimensions come up. Those are automatic temporary dimensions so you can kind of see where it needs to go. And also if I press space bar on my keyboard, it flips. I also can move my mouse around. You can see I'm moving it and it flips it. I'm also hitting tab. So four foot six from the other wall, I'm going to click once. So the greatest thing about Revit is that you don't have to cut the wall. So if you're used to AutoCAD and you place a door, you know that you have to trim and fill it and make it look like there's an opening through the wall. So this is, this is a great thing here. So now let's put some interior doors in. So again, let's go to load family 
And it remembers that we're in the Imper Revit's Imperial Library and that we're in the door category. So let's scroll through a garage door. That would be good. Yeah, let's do, let's make one of these a garage. So that's my garage. Same thing. I just hovered and clicked. And I'm still in the command. You know, I could place... I could place multiple doors one click after another and be in the command. So instead of having to exit, I'm just gonna go right into load family and find, let's find an interior door. Uh, that one looks good. Again, it's gonna give you some size options. Let's just do 30 by 80. And then let's place some doors inside. Maybe I have a room there. I'm gonna hit space bar or room there. Uh, okay, I'm gonna load family one more time. Move up and move up again. There is an openings category. I wanna just do an opening instead of a door. Maybe we do an opening. Okay, this is great, I'm glad it came up. So I was in the door command and I wanted to load a family and then I went into the openings command and it won't let me because the opening is not a door and it thinks it's only wants to load a door into the project since I'm in the door command. So do you want to retry? No, I'm just going to go to the insert tab, load family. Now it, know, it remembered I'm in the openings and now I can load my door in. Hmm, maybe I was still, you know, I forgot to, I'm gonna hit the modify button and now I'm out of the command. So I can go to the insert tab, which I'm on, and load family and opening door. Now I can insert it. So now I don't wanna go to the door command because that wasn't a door. I wanna to go to the component command because other than door and window, every other component that's going to be placed in your file, in your model, is this component button. So it went directly to opening door because that's what I last inserted into the project. Again, I'll just hover over, temporary dimensions come up and I can click once. So now I have a very bad floor plan, but some sort of entry, some sort of long, room, couple of rooms, and garage. Okay, so let's, you know, maybe I want to, I forgot to maybe put a small room for a bathroom. So I wanna add another interior wall. So I'm gonna simply click on one of these interior walls and on my keyboard, I hit C and then W. I'm gonna click on one of these interior walls and then I'm gonna click on my keyboard or press on my keyboard C S. You don't need to hit enter. You just need to hit C S. And now it's that's create similar. So I highlighted my generic interior six inch wall. I typed in C S on my keyboard and now I have, I'm in the wall command with that same type of wall. So I'm going to draw a wall, click modify. This is going to be my bathroom. So let's go to one of my interior doors on the keyboard again, hit C, S for create similar, and then I'll add my door, modify. Okay, so let's go find maybe a, some cabinetry and maybe a toilet. So again, that's in your component. So component, load family, going up in my file. So plumbing, let's go find a toilet under plumbing. Architectural fixtures, Mm, water closets, perfect. Toilet domestic 3D, let's insert that. So it isn't really the direction I want. I want it, the back of it to be on this wall. So I'm gonna hit space bar. Okay, that looks good. And click once. So sometimes I'm still in the command. So if I wanted to press, or if I wanted to place multiple toilets, I could, but I'm gonna press modify. These arrows are called controls. So 
This will mean different things with different components, but for this one, it just simply means you can flip it. This control isn't gonna do anything, right? It's flipping it sideways, but it doesn't do anything. There are control on walls, which indicates the exterior side of the wall. So I could simply flip that, but then the exterior of the wall would be on the interior of the house. So Doors have controls as well. Okay, let's add some cabinetry. So again, I go to my component, load family. Cabinetry is under casework in Revit. That's the category. So base cabinet, we can kind of scroll through what we want here. That looks like a good vanity. Those are all good vanities, we'll do that. Okay, and again, I'm hitting space bar and I can click. Mm, maybe I want a different size. Let's see what my size options are. There's only one size. So if I wanted this to be 60 inches instead of 48, simply click on it, click edit type. I'm going to duplicate this, rename it 60 inches. And then we can go into the parameters here, the dimensions. Depth, I wanna keep two inches. Height, I'll keep that. Toe depth, keep that. Toe height, width, there we go. 60 inches or five feet. And I'm simply going to push five and it knows that I want five feet. Great. So let's go to my move command and we'll maybe move this so it's on the edge. There we have a bathroom. Revit has a lot of components already in its library. Probably enough to get you by if you're just starting. But I will go over in some other videos how to create these families custom and edit some of these families to make them look like you want them to and uh, maybe just create new ones from scratch as well. So the last thing we want to do to complete this floor plan is draw a floor. And so you notice I activated the floor command and this looks a little familiar. Now we had these same drawing tools when we were using the wall, when we were placing the walls. Now we're in sketch mode. So you can see that the walls went a little bit gray and we have an X and we have a check mark. So the sketch mode, you, we have a pick walls command. I want to do that and I could just hover over my walls and click. And again, you see these controls. What this does is for, for my floor, I do want my boundary to be on the interior, but let's say I want it on the exterior. I can hit that control and it'll go to the exterior of the wall. When you use this pick walls command, it's also associating the floor to the walls. So if the floor, if the walls move, the floor will also move, which is really cool. Sometimes you don't want it to, sometimes you do, but there's tricks around it if you don't want it to. So when you're in sketch mode, no matter what it is, no matter if it's a floor, a ceiling, a roof, the three things that you will be in sketch mode for, you have to have a complete enclosed loop. And you can't have lines crossing like this. What you can do is if you wanted a cutout in the floor, you could have another loop within the floor. So in order to get out of sketch mode when you're complete, you hit the green check mark and there you have your floor. Last thing I wanna to do to just complete this is I'll place some room names. So under the architecture tab, under room, activate the room command. Uh, I just changed, I wanna see my room name, it was on room number. So you want to make sure that tag on placement is selected and I'm going to click each room. Go to the modify button. Now I can click once, click again and name my rooms.
I'm going to call this one the great room. And there you have it. That is the very basics of creating a floor plan in Revit. I hope you learned a few things and I hope to see you in some future videos. Thanks for watching.